<laughs> okay, okay, okay. How's it going? What's up? Y'all doing all right? Can you hear me? Can you see me? You see me? I'm guessing that's that's a yes. Everyone loves the wave. Every week it's the wave. The wave emoji. Everyone's jumping on. Sally Lewis, 882. Edizia Ediz Ediz Kalea. Kalea. Beth Wittenberg. That name's familiar. Appreciate your feedback in the comments on the post, Beth Wittenberg. Hopefully you're on my email list. Um, uh, dead dot bicycles. All right. Dead bicycles. Great handle. Hope everyone's doing okay. A lot of people jumping on. Beth Wittenberg, good day. I don't know what this means. Nobber Ian, sem dot underscore dot s. Not sure what Nobber Ian means, but uh, maybe you wanna translate that for me. Valentine 0236, love the cut G. I'm assuming you're talking about my badass hairstyle. I'm copywriting. I'm copywriting the look. I'm gonna copyright the look. We're gonna uh, we're gonna call it the uh, the lady killer look. <laughs> Kidding. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like people 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 generally have lost their sense of humor these days. You know, I and uh, I'm realizing now that my communication and my uh, texting and my emailing and things are, uh, everyone's like, well, let me put to you a more simple way. I, uh, I named a painting actually three years ago. I titled it the um, chronically aggrieved and the super touchy. And I think that's, it's as appropriate today as it was three years ago. Um, Beth Wittenberg. Okay. Well, we're about to answer that. Uh, and thank you, Beth Wittenberg. I, you know, I don't really get a lot of comments on my voice, but it's nice to know. Yo, yo. Oh, okay. I'm learning a lot here. Learning a lot here. Okay. Good to see y'all. I, I, uh, I can't answer all of these right now, but uh, all these comments and questions and stuff, but okay. So anyway, why don't we get to it? All right. Um, really quickly, I want to let everyone know that um, there's this little catalog that came out with my show that just closed a couple weeks ago with a really great, it's, it, it's a, uh, the catalogs turned out great. And, um, there's a really great essay in here by art critic. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Art critic, uh, Todd Camplin. Some really great images. It was laid out really nicely. Um, where the hell is it? I wrote a foreword. The gallery owner, uh, sorry about my sloppy camera work, wrote a foreword. It's a really great essay by Todd Camplin. That's, that's called, uh, what is Howard Sherman adding to the conversation? Anyway, uh, the gallery sold out, but then they ordered more, and I've got some, and they're on my website, and you can buy them off the website. So if you go to the shop page on my website, you'll see a little icon at the bottom of the page for the catalog. It'll look like this. You click on the image that looks like this, and you can buy a catalog at howardsherman.com, okay? And, um, yeah buy them they're they're starting to go so you might want to grab it before they're sold out again I, anyway uh catalogs are on the shop page of the website click on the shop tab and you'll see a little icon that looks like that there's also brand new prints and there's also other works on paper available 
in the shop on the shopping page. You can see the works on paper on the shopping page. And then if you want the prints, it's under another tab called available prints. You simply just need to click on the tab that says available prints or click on the shop page and you'll see the little icon for the catalog. Okay. The catalogs are $10 US. Not a bad deal. Uh, I'm really proud of that. Uh, several people worked very hard on that catalog. My sister, who's an editor, worked on it, and she's available for editorial services. Um, Todd worked really hard on it. I worked hard on it. My studio manager, uh, Lisa, worked very hard on it, and so did the uh, gallery. Um, so did the gallery. Sarah Fultz Fine Art, Fultz Fine Art worked really hard on it. So a lot of people went into making that small little um, project uh, happen, and it wasn't that small. It's actually really great. I shouldn't. I, I don't mean to be dismissive of it. Anyway, um, so we went on about that. Let, so let's get on to it, shall we? Um, today, what I wanted to uh, talk to you all about um, was, well, I'm tying in, forgive me, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at my notes here. I'm tying in some thoughts that I've previously uh, discussed in previous videos. Oh, by the way, before I jump in, yet again, last week's video, How to Find Your Tribe, Post it on the website, click on um, live from the studio. All of the videos have been posted, or almost all of the videos have been posted on the live from the studio tab at my website, howardsherman.com, okay? You can click on the link in my profile and get to the website, or you can just type in www.howardsherman.com. All of these videos are available to help you. They're all on my website. I'll say it again. I put last week's video along with all the other videos. They're on my website. They're there to help you if you feel like watching them, if you feel like sharing them. They're there to help. Other than a little bit of a plug at the beginning and maybe the end, there's always some sort of content. I hate that word content, but there's always a topic of the, of the day, of the week, that's hopefully there to help you, even if you're not an artist, although especially if you're an artist. But even if you're not an artist, you might find it very interesting and you might find it of value and helpful to you. Okay, I'm doing I'm trying to do these to help y'all, all right? So, um, anyway, where was I? Okay, uh, today I, I'm going to tie in some other thoughts, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about what, um, what might be called how to be a seeing machine. That's, how, that's what Jerry Saltz would say in his book, How to Be an Artist. You should read it but he would call it how to be a seeing machine. And I think that's a really appropriate, oh, I hope I don't lose y'all coming over here. I hope that's a, that's a really appropriate way to, to, to discuss what you need to become. But uh, I could also say how to become a more enriched, um, uh, a more enriched viewer. And I think that w regarding, regarding that, um, it's going to help you not just, I'm not just going to talk to you about how to become a better viewer, or how to see things more sharply regarding artwork, but it actually help open up, maybe help open up and expand your mind in general, right? In other ways. And I think that I, I certainly feel as though it's, that's happened with me. The more, the more I can unpack what I'm looking at in the context of uh, art or how an artist explains it to me, it's actually helped me expand how I view other things in the world. Um, maybe, maybe once I'm done talking, you'll right away be able to comment on other ways you see things. Okay. Anyway. Um, so first I want you to, first what I'm, what I want to talk to you about is in the context of how to better see things, how to be a seeing machine, I'm talking about artwork initially. Okay. So one thing you can do is, and I highly recommend this is grab a friend an artist would be great, but even not an artist, maybe just a smart friend. But um, if you can ideally grab another artist friend, that'd be great. And you want to go look at things. Okay, it's that simple. I have, I have a friend, another artist I know, and he's very bright and very obsessively observant. And I am not very obsessively anything. Well, some things, but not many things. And 
he almost always has a different take on or a, a different assessment, a different observation, a different take on the painting that we're both looking at in real time together than I do. It doesn't really change that much if it's an image we're emailing back and forth, but ideally you're gonna go do it in person together. Put on your masks, go do it, okay? Um, and I always seem to find that my friend, and my friend has an antenna that's tuned quite differently than my antenna. And I end up, I end, every time we look at something together, ideally in person, which I mentioned before, uh, his take is completely different. He's got a different read, and I learn from that. And consequentially, he tends to learn, whether he admits it or not, he tends to learn from my read as well. And um, we should probably both be carrying around pens and paper with us and writing notes down, and we rarely do, which is not something I'm proud of, but maybe I'll do better in the future. And um, we tend to we tend to both sort of um, benefit from the feedback. This really isn't that different than someone here is saying, and wine, sure, if you want to bring wine. This isn't that different than uh, a critique. The, the, the nice, uh, a planned critique, but the nice thing about this is you're on the fly and things might come in your periphery as you walk through a museum or a gallery or some place that... Um, that catch both of you off guard in the best possible way. And it doesn't necessarily need to be one other person, it can be several, um, but I think that that's really important, okay? The second, the second part to this whole seeing machine idea would be really truly unpack what you're looking at the way an artist would, even if you're not an artist. What I mean is um, start looking at how, um, don't just look at how the thing's made literally, but start looking at how it's, uh, made physically. What? How is it? How is it made? Um, what are the What are the ingredients in the work? What's the surface look like? What's the color look like? What's the installation of the work? How's it framed? Where's it hanging on the wall? What's the size of it? What's the scale of it? What, look at the sides. You always notice. I mean, Saltz, Saltz mentions this in his book too, but I think that it's something that's pretty obvious. You always can tell like when artists are looking at artwork in a gallery or museum or something like that, or even a studio, they're sniffing at the sides like a dog, right? They're looking at the sides, they're looking at up and down, they're looking around the room at the context of the space. All of this stuff is important, should be taken into consideration, okay? And you need to do it in person. You need to do it in person. You need to get off your asses, get off your phones, do it in person with other people. Don't let your social skills atrophy. And this is a good way to, to tighten up your communication skills and how you articulate what you see, which is a reference to how clearly and unusually uh, and wonderfully you might be thinking about something. Um, you're gonna learn a lot about sharpening your viewing skills and becoming more of a seeing machine by not just looking at good work, but bad work. and look at all of it. You're going to learn a lot from all of it. Okay. So it's more specifically, let's say you and your friend, a fellow seeing machine are walking into, by the way, I will repeat, I got that idea, um, from the salts book, which you should read how to, um, how to be an artist. I think it's called how to be an artist. I've mentioned it and referenced it in other videos, but let's say the two of you are walking and you're looking at a landscape painting and there's a sky in the landscape painting, but it's not just a sky. It's a certain shade of blue. Why? It's made a certain way. Why? Does it take up most of the picture plane? Why? When was it painted? What's the historical reference? What's the context? All of this stuff, um, all of this stuff is, there's a why to it that you should answer. You and your friend should walk around answering that. Why, why, why? There's a reason for all of it. Why am I, well, I'm not gonna show you that, it's not done, but why do I make what I'm making? I couldn't have made this 100 years ago. The historical references were needed for me to make what I'm making now, you know? I needed that history, I needed that context I needed to learn about it and read about it and look, 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 and then look some more about it in order to come up with my, my vision, you know, my unique vocabulary, my, my view. And it had to resonate with me in a, sort of, in a specific sort of way based on who I am, which is different than who you are.
You. I like the pointing. <laughs> you. I'm different than you. You're different than me. You're going to make something different than I am. And we're both going to understand, you know, what the, um, why things are made the way they're made, including the, the, the physical ingredients, but the historical references too. Not nearly enough people uh, take all that stuff into consideration. And I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about all artists, whether they've got a formal education or not. Anyway, that's it. I talked for about 10 minutes there, actually, about the topic. I'm looking at the clock. That is how to, how to be a, a better seeing machine. An overview. Okay? Got to get out there and look. You got to do the work. Um, so, uh, Roscoe Earl, thank you for that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, anyway, I will... Uh, so, that's it. We kept it down short and sweet. I guess that's about 15 minutes. I'll take some questions really quickly. Give you all a minute to um, to um, send some questions along. Once again, some of these some of these terms and ideas are things that I'm paraphrasing from my reading, and I still I still I will once again recommend the How to Be an Artist book by Jerry Saltz. I've talked about how I feel about the pros and the cons of it, but I think in general it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good read for everyone. You know, the thing that makes me sad is I talk and talk and talk, and I know that there aren't going to be a lot of people who are going to actually get off their ass and go do what I'm saying, but there are a few of you who will, and hopefully this will help. Questions. Let's get some questions. Uh, Beth Wittenberg, uh, I'm not talking about my work that specifically. I'm talking about um, the context of my work in, in art history. Thony Duval. What did you get out of your MFA? I got a lot out of my MFA, and there's another video where I talk about the benefits of art school and graduate school a little bit. I'm not gonna get into, that could turn into a five or 10 minute conversation right now, um, but I talk, about, I talk about that in another video. If you want to, uh, I don't remember which video, I haven't gone through and indexed them by topic or anything, but if you wanna fish around, um, on my videos, you can. You know, by the way, one other thing I wanna mention, there are other people out there doing this sort of thing really professionally, and they're, they, I highly recommend you view their stuff. In no way am I trying to compete, or I'm doing this to be helpful, but there are like several other people out there where this is their, this sort of helpful stuff to artists is their business. And you should look at them. They've. They're putting a lot into it, um, you know. Um, don't just look at me. I am not the the super coach for this. I'm just some artist in you know in the arena taking blows, dishing them out, trying to help y'all out. Okay, and that might be why my takes a little bit different. I'm coming at it from try. I'm not. I'm not coming at it from so much a professional practices uh, point of view, um, but from uh, an artist in the studio from his point of view. I could easily teach a professional practices class. I just don't have the time to get into that. And that question about the MFA is a whole nother thing, you know. All these pragmatic, practical things, I could touch on them here and there. I just don't have, I don't really have the time. And there's other people out there really doing that in a more, in a, in a, in a uh, pretty substantial way. And you should go look at them and, in some instances, pay for them, um, you know, if, if, if that's feasible. Um, cause education is never a waste. Um, and paying them, paying for education is, a, I, I still think is a good thing. Okay. Let me scroll through. There's a few questions here. Um, man, I rambled there on things. I didn't want to. Oh, 
Uh, Elman, I can't get into all that now. Roscoe Earl, do you sell a lot? Has the COVID affected who, who are? I don't know what who ha, are means. Uh, 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 Roscoe Earl, I live off my work, um, which is a very, very, very uh, hard thing to do. And the pandemic actually has not really made that big a difference one way or the other regarding my personal sales. Uh, I'm assuming you're an artist, but that doesn't mean that you make the same thing as me and your stuff might sell differently than mine. So I generally think that uh, my general, my very generic overview take on that topic, which I can sum up pretty quickly is, I think the least affected people by the pandemic are generally the wealthier people. And uh, my read on it was, um, they, they not, not exclusively, I obviously make some very inexpensive things like a $10 catalog and this and that. But um, uh, generally speaking, my take is that people of a bit more uh, means, wealthier, I, what I mean is wealthier people tend to be able to afford and spend money on, on art. And not all art, but, but some, certainly some of my art, and um, not that I find it to be terribly expensive, but expensive enough to where... Um, you know, not everyone's going to buy it. But I think a lot of those folks generally panicked back in March for a week or two or three, and then they kind of went back to their normal um, wealthy routines of lifestyles of the rich and maybe famous. That's my take. You look sexy. Thank you, whoever you are. Diane. Um, okay. Um, I would like to get in one or two more questions before I call it a day, but I do want to keep this kind of short. Um, this really isn't a studio visit, Roscoe Earl. You know, there's a lot of stuff I'm not showing y'all. Okay. Um, I'm skipping a couple of questions. Any other questions? Anything else? No? Yes? I just have to pop my back. There you go. Oh. Sarah Hanek Vic. Advice for emerging artists. Uh, pray. Big question. Don't have enough time to answer that. Anything else? Okay. Uh, I would really appreciate it if um, you'd email me your questions and... Um, <laughs> I just snorted. <laughs> Casey underscore Matthews underscore artist. Uh, you can jump on the edibles today, huh? What kind of shampoo do you use? <laughs> funny, very funny. Um, uh, you know, Casey, if I got to know you a little bit better, maybe I'd share that top secret information. I feel a little too vulnerable even uh, reading your question out loud. Um, anyway, uh, I would love it if y'all would send me some uh, some questions. I will review them and I will um, do my best to answer them. I want to point out I did get a question or two last week, but sometimes I think I get questions from people who already know the answers to their questions. They're just looking for permission, okay? So keep that in mind. Before you send me a, a question or five million questions wrapped in one question, um, which happens a lot too, um, I feel as though be thoughtful with your questions and think long and hard if, you're really, if you really want my answer or you're just looking for permission even though you already know the answer, okay? Big, that's, that's, that's important. And I, I mean, I, I'm. I, I, that's important because you're. If you, if you're an artist sending me a question, um, half of the time I feel like you're asking me permission for you to be an artist, disguised in the form of a question. So keep that in mind. Send me your questions. I'd love to. I'd love it if you emailed them to me. Do not direct message them to me. Send me an email, um, and. 
I think that's going to be about it for right now. Okay. Sound good? Good. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.